so there are some pressures there is something happening there and this should not be ignored because it, there are some dynamics um, you need to be aware of so overall meetings do matter for wikipedia um, and those relationships that people create in the real world matter for online editing for the online editing experience and those that go to meetings really belong to the core of the project of course there's some self-selection bias meaning i don't know if it's if people edit wikipedia and then go to meetings um, or if they like going to meeting and like editing wikipedia so i cannot say it's the going to meetings that make people more active or if it's just the same sort of people who like to edit and who like to go to those meetings. Um, but they can provide friendly introductions to the rules and norms of the platform, which is the point of those editor thons that, that works. So if people are introduced to the platform in a more in a friendly and interactive way, that really helps to get people engaged. And those kind of work meetings also provide a direct benefit to Wikipedia. Um, so usually the editathons um, have a topic, a pre-selected topic. So you start an editathon with the idea to edit on topic X, and um, during that meeting, benefits are created. And now I wanted to end with some some best practices for meetings, um, kind of things you need to be aware of or consider. Um, so I would say it's a good idea to organize the meetings online and always set the date for the next meeting. In the German language Wikipedia, those meeting communities um, were most successful that always had the new date in mind um, as soon as the meeting took place. Once there's a delay, people start to forget, but with a clear rhythm, you just block it in your calendar like every every first monday we meet and then people can plan accordingly it also makes sense to keep a list of attendees because people some people like to avoid some others or people come because person x is coming and also people like to join when they see that many others are coming and meetings can be advertised for example on talk pages so what often happens in the German language Wikipedia is the people write on the talk pages of others that um, that they know live in the area or that have edited articles regarding a certain city, just to kind of then get the people living there engaged. And it does make sense to document past meetings with reports and photos, but be aware how much detail you want to share. But generally, it's a good idea to show people have met and they had fun together. Also, what I've heard in the German Wikipedia is that um, organized ex excursions really attract users. So the Germans do like to organize um, excursions to specific places. So on the photo on the right, they organized an excursion to an airport. So find activities that people are interested in and that they cannot attend without a group because the costs are too high or you just need a group to go. This also can have a direct benefit um, because what the Germans often did is um, to organize an excursion to places of interest like churches, mosques, historical buildings. They organize a tour, they learn new information and then uh, they take pictures. And then directly after the meeting, people then go back to Wikipedia and feed in that new information and the new pictures they took and learned. Also, meetings should always contain some social component. So the work meetings help people get introduced to the platform, but it is really that social component that builds a community and that gets people back to um, edit on Wikipedia. Building friendships and getting to know the people is really what makes the difference and why those offline meetings matter. And they also should be as inclusive as possible and offer friendly spaces, especially for newcomers. Um, so in the German language Wikipedia, there was the complaint, for example, that all the people knew each other and new people didn't know how to get into this, into this big round of people. So having like a 
start with a round of introduction really helps in getting everyone involved. Um, I also read on your um, community page with a past meeting that you had problems, um, that you had trouble getting people convinced about the idea of free knowledge so that you took pictures of things and um, that was great, but it, there was some, some skepticism about the whole idea of Wikipedia and the free knowledge movement. Um, what happens often in the German language Wikipedia is that people collaborate with organizations that are very close to the movement of free knowledge. So then there are many collaborations with museums, galleries and libraries, also editathons happening at the university to get library staff and students involved. So I think that might be a good way to get people involved that are already close to the idea of the movement, so you don't have to convince them first, but only give them the tools to contribute. And also, um, I don't know if you already do this, but you might be able to request some funding from Wikimedia, if that's possible. I know from the German language Wikipedia that um, events are usually insured. If anything was to happen, so any sort of accidents, um, people were insured and then the German Wikimedia would pay if someone tripped and broke their leg. Um, and there is also some compensation available for travel. I don't know, I think it's only specific events that the German Wikimedia Foundation then pays travel for attendees. Um, so if you don't do that already, I think I would um, advise you to check out for funding opportunities from Wikimedia. And yeah, that's it from my presentation. And thank you all for coming and the invitation. And I'm looking forward to questions. Uh, thank you so much, Nicole, for that lovely, lovely presentation. Uh, before uh, I uh, open up for questions, I have a question first. So I'm going to shoot it off at you. Uh, so this is a, it's a very fascinating, a little off the beaten path kind of a topic. So my assumption would be that okay, you had some sort of an experience at your at the meetups that you did attend, which kind of prompted you to take this topic up. So I'm curious about your experience uh, around meetups and what uh, inspired you to take this up as a topic. Um, thank you. I actually didn't start with experience, uh, but I was I was on Wikipedia volunteer, and I then found those uh, meeting pages, and I was just fascinated by the level of detail and just the information hidden there. Um, so coming with a social science and social network background, I was just amazed by this gold mine of meeting data where people in all detail told me when they were meeting whom and the, which restaurant and what they did. Um, I did attend one editathon at the University of Warwick. Um, we were a very small group of two administrators in the English Wikipedia and I think three attendees. Um, and it was a friendly space that helped getting people used to Wikipedia syntax and just introduced some rules. We mostly played around with the sandbox. And I think I'm the only person still active out of those three. About 30% is still a good quota. <laughs> Spectacular. Thank you so much. Uh, and I have a lot more questions of my own, but I'm going to park them because I don't want to turn into a dictatorship here. Uh, so others, if you have questions, please feel free to uh, unmute yourself, speak. Uh, you can use the chat box also. Uh, Claudia. Hi, um, I'm Claudia from Austria. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you for organizing this. I stumbled across um, this lecture and the paper today um, and just joined very spontaneously. So I want to thank you um, for organizing it. Um, and finding that for us and unearthing it like it's um, it, 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 I think it's not well known enough, but I'm already sp spreading the word uh, in, in the cycle. So I'm an executive director of Wikimedia Austria and I already shared it with other um, other EDs um, around the movement because I find it really, really insightful. 
um, and has some uh, good answers to questions that we ask ourselves when it comes to granting and regranting and how we spend our money. So um, I'm, I'm happy to see that uh, something that is, I think, um, um, a very core part of the work of a lot of affiliates um, organizing meetups um, and, and the titatons and the like um, actually has positive impact and to have that um, proven in a scientific way. Um, but also to, to see like where we still need to be, you know, um, where we can get better perhaps in how we do it. So that that's very insightful. Um, after, like, and especially after the pandemic, because um, that, of course, put a halt to, to a lot of these things. And we could notice in the beginning it was OK. So the first year, I think um, um, all these in-person meetings also led to the people um, um, meeting online um, to, to basically give a glue to that social um, circles. But you could see that more than a year, um, it was just getting too too long after a while to to not really have personal interactions anymore. And then you could see it taking a toll. So in the beginning, I think especially the close knit groups who met before regularly made it well through the first month and perhaps the first year, and then it started deteriorating. And that that would be my question. So um, whether it would be possible. Um, to, to come up with a research design to show a bit the difference between online meetings, because now we're thinking also with the climate crisis and everything, of course, we, we don't completely go back to before 2020 anyhow. So I think we all were craving more personal interactions again. But we also know that for a lot of people, it's um, expensive, like in, in more distributed areas like India, for example, like it's not possible to have that um, type of meeting culture like we have here in the German speaking world. Um, so I'm, uh, I would be super interested to have follow up research here and, but, and, and how that um, could be done, perhaps the research design to really find out um, what the qualitative difference is between regular hybrid or online meetings and these um, uh, regular in person meetings. So this, um, this is, this is my question. Sorry for taking so long, but I'm so enthusiastic. <laughs> No, thank you for that enthusiasm, and it's great to hear your background, so also that you can, can use the information I'm giving. And um, yes, there is this one study by Farzan, um, they did compare in-person editathons and virtual editathons in the US. Um, they did find a more positive effect of the in-person editathon, so they were more successful in keeping the um, the attendees active on Wikipedia. Um, I only focused on face-to-face -face meetings and um, stopped my data collection when COVID happened. I think it is difficult to compare the, the, the online meetings in COVID time with like pre-COVID offline meetings. Like obviously more things happen like a pandemic. And also many people just grew tired of all the online meetings that then started play, taking place. I think we all know Zoom fatigue and sometimes as, as good as online meetings are, it's also just nice to, to not be glued to a screen. Um, I think it is now that people that meetings start to resume again, that we can compare offline and online meetings again. So I think it doesn't make sense to compare the online meetings in 2020 or even 2021 with offline meetings happening before. But I think now that we do have a fair share of online and offline meetings, we could start comparing um, the attendees and see whether they stay on Wikipedia longer and whether they make more edits. You just need to start collecting the data again, which it, it is really nice that everything is documented but everything is documented in a user written way, but just grabbing, scraping all that information and cleaning it and making it, making it usable for statistic um, is quite a big effort. But yeah, with enough time, um, again, I think I would look at all offline and online meetings, again, collect all attendees and then compare their activity levels. Or even just to find out what makes a good hybrid event. I think with that, you can also earn a lot of money. Like if you write the one uh, standard book on like what makes a good hybrid event. Um, so for both, right? So that also there could be connection be formed between people um, who are online and offline. So I was really thinking about that now that I attended a couple of um, hybrid events as an online attendee. 
I, I have some ideas there. So I think this is a really big field of research that goes beyond the Wiki, Wikiverse, actually, mm -hmm. because more and more people start thinking about like what actually makes a successful um, hybrid event um, for both types of uh, um, attendees, right? That's where we really want to forge connections between like um, different types of attendees. But I rest my case here and I um, let leave space for other people to ask questions too. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Akbar Ali has a question in the chat box. Uh, so he says, uh, the phenomena of people attending Wiki meetups with initial enthusiasm, but subsequent, uh, subsequently losing their motivation to contribute over time has been observed. This is something which uh, Nicole mentioned in her talk as well. Uh, what steps can be taken to address this issue? Oh, that's a big one. Uh, Nicole, yeah, there is you want to comment some... on that? <laughs> Yeah, thank you for reading it. Um, there is some research on this and also on what makes people, people lose their motivation even quicker. So, for example, getting reverted, so editing something and then having your first edit reverted again, that's very, very demotivating. So all rewards and undoes is, is very bad for newcomers. Um, but research in the English Wikipedia has shown that the tea house is very positive in keeping people. So the tea house is a place where users can ask questions and people should then answer and guide them, um, like help them in a very friendly way without showing them too much of wiki rules or everything they should know, but just guiding them in a friendly way. And um, that has shown to help um, keep people active. And otherwise, yeah, it, it is one of the main issues of Wikipedia and, and all volunteer projects, also all open source projects have the problem that people are active in a trial phase, but then leave again. Um, so yeah, I think it is building a personal connection. I know there are many bots who also send welcome messages to people that has also shown to help a little bit. Um, at least if they are not that very obviously a bot. So having a very standard uh, welcome message on the talk page uh, where it's very clear that this is just standard pro doesn't, probably doesn't help as much as a more personalized. At least that's my guess. I know there's just some research that those welcome messages are good. And I would say the more personal it is, the better. Spectacular, yeah. Who would have thought like being nice to people helps people stay? That's a problem. Something we have not been able to do for the last however many millennia we've been around. Yeah, but we're working at it, humanity in its projects. Uh, Paolo, uh, Paolo SP, you've raised your hand, I believe. You can unmute yourself and ask your question or make a comment. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Okay, so um, in my, uh, I have a question or a, a comment, uh, but first I, I would like to say that one of the things that have made more success on organizing meetings in the Portuguese speaking community is that it is connected with the Telegram channel. So uh, usually we, when, when the meeting uh, is about to start or is almost starting, we pass there. And there are always some people and sometimes some new people that, that drops there, uh, even if it's only to see what it is. And then sometimes they stay, uh, and not only the regulars. Uh, actually, it happened with me with this meeting, because uh, I, I was looking at the telegram when I saw, as I think it was Azaf, which posted a notice to this meeting. And that's why I am I'm here. So it, it really works. The comment I had to say is that one thing that has been uh, putting me away from um, some online activities on the last last years is that in many occasions I've noticed that meetings that are um, advertised as um, workshops are not in fact workshops. They are communications, uh, and it's one person speaking and the others listening. And when it's a, when you are about to start a discussion, it ends. And I. I think it's it's kind of uh, because it's the easiest way to do a meeting is to to do a communication. You tell whatever, and then the time is up and <laughs> and you are gone. But it's it's not. It, 
I, I've been in some of those meetings and no, I, I am very wary when it says workshop <laughs> in the name because most of the time, at least in Portuguese, it's not workshop. It's just the standard communication. Yeah, it's a good idea with this Telegram channel. Um, at least in the German Wikipedia, I do think they they mostly like their very public organization on the page. And they do like to document everything as publicly as possible. Um, and yeah, that's also a good point with, with the workshop. I think it's important to advertise something, call it what it is, so people know, is it going to be a workshop? Am I working or is it only someone talking? It, of course, is frustrating if you're looking forward to discussing and then it's only one person talking. Uh, Omar, uh, I believe you raised your hand. Yes. Um, thank you, Nicole, for this uh, very great presentation. Um, my question is about, um, I don't know, I don't have a good estimate of the proportion, but I know that there are people on Wikipedia who want to remain anonymous. You know, they have a username that doesn't reflect their real name. And then these meetups, though, people sign up. So when someone goes to a meetup, does that automatically mean that they cannot be anonymous? Or can it be that, you know, you don't know who I'm, I really am, so I, I'll just kind of intermix with the crowd, and then I'm I'm someone, but you don't you can't match me my person to my name. Is that possible? And then also, if it's not possible, then do you think there is this divergence among people who kind of don't want to be known but still want to be editing Wikipedia versus the type of person who is open about it and goes to the meetings? Um, do you think there is that issue? I mean, not an issue. I, I guess it's just, you know, is that a thing? That's just curiosity. I don't know what consequences it, it would have or anything. Or is it that maybe I'm just uh, exaggerating in my mind the number of people who want to remain anonymous? Just your thoughts on that. Yeah, that's a great question. And no, you're not exaggerating. Um, so there are people who, um, also go to meetings and only introduce themselves with their username. So then you have a person, but you still don't know their real name. You just know their username. So it's not unusual that in the German meetups, people only talk to each other with their username. Um, but yes, I agree. Also agree and think there is an issue that people don't want to uh, don't want to attend meetings just because they like to be anonymous. And I also know that that. It, in one meeting, um, a person stopped attending because they started more problematic or more politically um, hot topics on Wikipedia. And then they stopped attending meetings because they were scared about now their face being attached to their edits. Um, so I do think that, that that stops people from attending and some people would like to be more anonymous. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Omar. Uh, uh, Paolo uh, uh, has his hand raised. Yeah, just a short follow-up from, from what Omar just said. I, when, one thing that kind of um, annoys me on the online meetings is precisely uh, that some meetings, they do they put a lot of pressure. I, I don't mind telling who I am, but I, I, I see that when some new guys are there, and it's kind of the alcoholic anonymous, like you have to tell your story to all the others uh, to break the highs. I, I personally, I find that horrible. I, it was one of the things why I, I initially was very wary of participating on Wikimedia stuff because I had the idea that they have this kind of American habit of 
uh, doing these icebreakers in the beginning, which, which are very, um, I don't like them. <laughs> and I, I know many other, other people don't, don't, don't like them. And especially when they are connected with your, your personality, when you have to tell the others who you are, where you are from, what has been your day today. Um, it, it puts a, pre a pressure on the privacy of, of the person. And, and, and it's true that many, many people in Wikipedia want to remain anonymous, not, not only for... Uh, because they are shy or timid or, or whatever, but because it's dangerous to edit Wikipedia. When you are editing, you, you don't even know what subject will be dangerous. There are, there are many people suing uh, editors of Wikipedia, at least in the Portuguese Wikipedia. It's a, it's a dangerous place. So, so you don't know who is in the meeting. You don't know who, who you are revealing the, the, the test to. It's... Um, it's a... It, it, I think it's it's something that that, that should that should be uh, um, sometimes should be people should and should, should be more careful of. Yeah, that's a very interesting point of view. I, I've never really considered it um, to be dangerous, but it is interesting to to hear that you you can be sued for for editing Wikipedia at least in in your Portuguese context. I so, yeah, am being sued. You are, oh I no. Have, yeah. <laughs> oh, and, and, and a number of models as well. <laughs> my, on a personal note, like my sympathies are with you. And uh, I don't know if there's any way we could be helpful, but I guess the community is there for you. At least I am. That's what I can say. Uh, so uh, let's, uh, Akbar has a quick question in the chat box. He says, are there any resources available that provide suggestions for activities to engage in during Wiki meetups? So that's, a, that's an interesting question. Nicole, if you'd like to comment on that, are there manuals, hardcore resources, uh, toolkits that you can use to make liven up a meeting, make it more useful, productive, inclusive, so to speak? Um. I can point you to anything in spe any specific resource, um, but I know that Wikimedia has also done some research, or at least in their Wikimedia survey, looked at organizers of meetups, and they might also have a guidebook about um, how to organize an editathon. And I know at the editathon that I attended, we did get a little booklet with information like what is a some landing pages uh, to look at and where are all the rules of Wikipedia. Um, so I think there are some resources flying around. I would look for um, for the keywords like meetup organizer and editathon organizer. I think you should be able to find something there. Oh yeah, art and feminism for sure has a lot, yeah. Okay, I think that should give you some place to start from, Akbar. Uh, Akib, uh, I, you had your hand, hand raised a while ago. Yeah, thank you, Muni, for allowing me to speak uh, here. Uh, I'm thankful to Nicole for accepting my invitation and being our guest here. And thanks for, to Muni for hosting this conversation on my behalf and on the behalf of the DCW. I, uh, as uh, my friend Isaac has uh, asked on the chat box that uh, they would need this presentation for their assistance. I feel, would it be possible for you to upload this on comments or perhaps share it over to the DCW? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, for sure. I can share the presentation. That's no problem. Spectacular. Any other questions, comments, afterthoughts, half-baked ideas that anyone would like to share? Nothing. So I believe we can close now. I think this is the right time. We've been around for 50 minutes. Uh, so thank you so much, Nicole. Allow me to call you Dr. Schwitter as a fellow PhD student, I can understand what it means. 
Uh, so thank you so much, Dr. Schwitter, for accepting this invitation and speaking uh, on this really insightful topic. Definitely, I'm one of those people who have edited Wikipedia like a few times and then completely forgotten about it. I hope this, even though it's like a virtual meetup, it might help me personally get back into editing Wikipedia. Uh, thank you, Claudia, Omar. Uh, Akbar, everyone for your questions, for participating, for making this a really insightful discussion, and Akib, of course, for inviting me to host this session and organizing it and sharing it uh, and getting everyone together. So, yeah, thank you so much, everyone else, for joining, coming, listening, for your thoughts. And yeah, I believe we can say goodbye now and hope to see you again sometime soon. Thank you all for coming, for your questions, and thanks, Monique, for hosting as well. Thank you. You're welcome. It was a pleasure. OK. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Goodbye.